Okay, so now we have a sense of how to find zeros of polynomials and what they even mean. So the zeros of the polynomial are just the places where the polynomial crosses the x-axis, or those values for x, which if you plug into the polynomial, give zero. So you can just take the polynomial, set it equal to zero, chunk, 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 solve for x, and you've got it. Okay, but let's take a look at the possible answers that you can get when you actually do that solving. Let's just think first just about the quadratic and parabolas, since we're sort of familiar with those. So if you take a look at a parabola like this graphically, what you'd see is, well, the roots of the parabola, or the zeros of the quadratic, would be those places where, in fact, the curve crosses the x-axis. So you'd see them here. They're two. And it turns out there will always be two zeros to a quadratic. Now, those two zeros may, in fact, be imaginary numbers in which case the picture would look more like this. It wouldn't actually cross the real x-axis, but there would be these two imaginary solutions out there somewhere. The other possibility, the more popular one, for at least me and probably for you, is that there are two real solutions. And there you go. You can see those two points. Now, there's a third possibility that's sort of fun to think about. And that's the one where the curve just touches, just grazes the x-axis. We saw this earlier when we were playing match game. Here's another example of it. Now, in this case, believe it or not, we say, mathematicians don't know how to count, we say that there are still two zeros, but they both happen to be the same. We say, that's a zero, and that's a zero. So we just count that same zero twice. And the reason why we count it twice is because you see the thing sort of comes down, just nicks it, and goes up. Notice that if it were just a little bit lower, we would have two. And so if you go up a little higher, we'd still have two. And so sort of when you keep doing that, basically mathematicians say there's still two, but they happen to be equal. In this case, we say that this is a zero with multiplicity two. It just means that it's a zero that actually happens twice. So this is also a zero right here that also happens twice. You can imagine with a cubic seeing the same kind of phenomena. It would look like this. You'd go up. You'd come down and just caress the x-axis and then go back up. This actually has three real roots, three real zeros. One of them is here, and then two of them are right there. This is a zero with multiplicity two, because it comes down, just hits it, and comes up. So in fact, we could talk about the multiplicities of zeros, and that's what I want to talk to you about just now. And let's take a look at some examples. For example, let's look at x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I want to know, what are all the zeros of this object, and what are their multiplicities? So I set this equal to 0 and solve. And I hope, hope, hope that I can factor this, because if I can't factor it, this is going to be bad news. This plus sign tells me that we're going to have both the same sign, and they'll both be minus. So I have a minus, a minus. Something whose product is 4 and sum is negative 4. So that would be 2 and 2. And look what I see. Well, I'm going to write this out in this sort of compact way. I see that I have x minus 2 all squared. So what are the two roots? What are the two zeros of this? Either x equals 2 or x equals 2. So this actually has a 0 of x equals 2, but it's with multiplicity 2 because it happens twice. And that little 2 tells you that it happens twice. So here's an example of a parabola that's going to come down and just touch, just touch the world at that one point. But mathematicians will say it touches it sort of twice, once here and then once at itself. OK, OK, one last example. This one's really easy, so don't worry about it. Suppose I just tell you that I have a function f of x, and I give it to you in factored form, and I want you to find the zeros of this polynomial, but also the multiplicities. So there it is, x plus 1 squared times x minus 1 cubed times x squared minus 10. To find the zeros, I set that whole thing equal to 0. So I just set it equal to 0, and what happens? If I set it equal to 0, well, either this term equals 0, or that term equals 0, or that term equals 0, because I have a product of numbers giving 0. Well, if this term equals 0, the only way that can happen is if x equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is a 0, but it has multiplicity 2. It actually occurs twice. If I were to write this out, I could say x plus 1 
times x plus 1. So I see that the minus 1 appears twice. So I say this appears with multiplicity 2. What about this? Well, here I would see that three times, x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. So the root, or the 0, x equals 1, that's, where that, that's what makes this 0, would actually have multiplicity 3. And what's the solution here? The solution here is going to be what? Well, x equals plus or minus the square root of 10. So these both occur with multiplicity 1, because they only appear once. All right, try some of these on your own and see if you can start to find the zeros and multiplicities.